Hi class, welcome to another day of Reading with Miss Jenkins. Today I have a wonderful story for you about space. And I thought you might like it because we like looking at magic school bus uh, stories in our classroom as well as movies that they've had about uh, Miss Frizzle and her class adventures. Here's a fun fact for you. The hat that I'm wearing today was made by my dad nearly 10 years ago and I still have it. It's in great condition, but since then, some of the planets have been altered in our solar system. But today, we're gonna read about Miss Frizzle and her adventures called Lost in the Solar System. The story is by Joanna Cole. What is the solar system by John? The solar system is the sun and all the bodies that orbit around it, the nine planets, their moons, the asteroids, chunks of rocks and comets, also balls of ice and dust. It was trip day again in Miss Frizzle's class. Everyone was super excited. We were going to the planetarium to see a sky show about the solar system. Class, an orbit is the path of a planet or other object around the sun. I knew that, I got all A's in school. I have five computers. My class went to the planetarium last year. Arnold's cousin Janet was visiting our class for the day. I know all of you will be nice to our guests, said the Frizz. What a show off. Thanks for inviting your cousin Arnold. She's actually nice when you get to know her. My school is taller than your school. Our swings are better than your swings. My teacher is weirder than your teacher. We tried to be nice to Janet, we really did. As we got on the school bus, we told her that Miss Frizzle is the weirdest teacher in school, but Janet wasn't interested. She wanted to tell us about her stuff. Who wants a tall school? As usual, it took a while to get the old bus started, but finally we were on our way. As we were driving, Miss Frizzle told us all about how the Earth spins like a top as it moves into orbit. It was just a short drive to the planetarium, but Miss Frizzle talked fast. This bus is a wreck. At least it started this time. We have new school buses at our school. When the Earth spins, we say it rotates. The Earth makes one complete rotation turn every 24 hours. When we got to the planetarium, it was closed for repairs. Class, this means we'll have to return to school, said the Frizz. We were so disappointed. Back to school? I'm so depressed. My planetarium is always open. On the way back, as we were waiting at a red light, something amazing happened. The bus started tilting back. As we heard the roar of rockets, oh dear, said Miss Frizzle. We seem to be blasting off. Here we go again, not another crazy trip. Children, we're going through the atmosphere, the layers of air around the earth. I guess we'll be seeing the solar system after all. My bus has bigger rockets than your bus. Yeah, right, Janet. Why are spaceships launched with rockets by Wanda? Spaceships cannot just fly into outer space. They need rockets to break free from the powerful grip of Earth's gravity. What is gravity by Michael? Gravity is a force that pulls objects toward the center of the Earth. Other planets have gravity too. Larger planets usually have more gravity. Smaller planets usually have less gravity. Why do people feel weightless in space by Phil? A spaceship and the people in it both go into orbit around the nearest planet or sun. When this happens, the people are no longer pulled toward the floor of the ship, so they float around. When the roar of the rocket stopped, we looked around. Everything had changed. The bus had turned into a spaceship. We were all dressed in space suits and we were lighter than feathers. We even floated above our seats. I'm flying, I'm flying higher than you are. Look, it's a UFB. A what? An unidentified flying banana. 
Far behind in the black sky, we saw the planet Earth getting smaller and smaller. We were traveling into space. We had become astronauts. Look how small the Earth seems from here. Class, notice Earth's blue oceans, white clouds, and brown land? It's beautiful. I think I have to go to the bathroom. The Frizz said that our first stop would be the moon. So we got off the bus and we looked around. There was no air, no water, no sign of life. All we saw were dust and rock and lots of craters. Miss Frizzle said the craters were formed billions of years ago when the moon was hit by meteorites. Meteorites are falling chunks of rock and metal. We are so light on the moon. That's because the moon has less gravity than the earth. It was fun on the moon. We wanted to play, but Miss Frizzle said it was time to go. So we got back on the bus. We'll start with the sun, the center of the solar system, said the Frizz, and we blasted off. Look how high we can jump. It was in a national jump rope contest. I won, of course. Is there a national bragging contest? What makes the moon shine by Rachel? The moon does not make any light of its own. The moonlight we see from Earth is really light from the sun. It hits the moon and bounces off the way that light is reflected from a mirror. The moon's orbit by Amanda Jane. The moon then travels in orbit around the Earth just as the Earth travels around the sun. The sun is a star. Our sun is an average star like the one we see in the night sky by Carmen. We zoom toward the sun, the biggest, brightest, and hottest object in the solar system. Jets of super hot gases shot out at us from the surface. Thank goodness, Miss Frizzle, don't get too close. You should never look directly at the sun. It can damage your eyes, children. You should never drive a bus directly into the sun either. Solar flares are giant storms on the sun's surface. She steered around to the other side and pulled away. We'll be seeing all the planets in order class, explained Frizzle. Mercury is the first planet, the closest to the sun. My school is heated with solar energy. I have a sun deck. I have 10 pairs of sunglasses. Give us a break, Janet, everyone said. How hot is the sun by Flory? Well, at the center of the sun, the temperature is about 15 million degrees Celsius. The sun is so hot that it heats planets that are millions of kilometers away. So they're really traveling to the center of the sun. Mercury was a dead sun-baked planet. The planet is a lot like our moon. There's no water and hardly any air, said Miss Frizzle. Notice the craters on its surface as we pass by. Before long, we felt ourselves being pulled in the gravity of Venus, the second planet from the sun. Venus was completely covered by a thick layer of yellowish clouds. We will now explore the surface of Venus, said Miss Frizzle. Below the clouds, Venus was as dry as a desert. The ground was covered with rocks and it was so hot. It was about 460 degrees Celsius. That's much hotter than an oven baking cookies. The air was heavy and we could feel it pressing down upon us. Miss Frizzle said there are active volcanoes around too. We said, let's get out of here. Our next stop, Mars. The red planet, fourth from the sun, announced the Frizz. On our way, we'll be passing through the orbit of Earth, the third planet. The bus lifted off with a roar. Did you guys hear Alexa trying to give me facts about the sun? <laughs> As we came close to Mars, we passed its two moons, which are called Phobos and Deimos. Compared to our moon, they were tiny and they weren't even round. Looking down, we saw a huge canyon. Miss Frizzle said that it was as long as the United States. There was a volcano three times taller than the tallest volcano on the earth. And all around, there were channels that looked like dried up riverbeds. We landed and started walking around and suddenly a huge dust storm blew away. Miss Frizzle said dust storms on Mars can last for months at a time. They cover the whole planet 
and we scrambled back on the bus and we headed out. Mars is the last of what we call the inner planets. Miss Frizzle shouted above the war of the rockets. We will now be going through the asteroid belt to the outer planets. Thousands of asteroids were spinning all around us. All at once, we heard the tinkling of broken glass and one of our taillights had been hit by an asteroid. Asteroid. Miss Frizzle put the bus on autopilot and went out to take a look. She kept on talking about asteroids over the bus radio. Suddenly, there was a snap. Miss Frizzle's tether line had broken. Oh no. Without warning, the rockets fired up and the bus zoomed away. The autopilot was malfunctioning. On the radio, Miss Frizzle's voice grew fainter and fainter and fainter. Then she was gone. Oh no, what are they going to do? They were on their own and they were lost in the solar system. Kids, I'll meet you later, later, later. Come on in, Miss Frizzle. We can't hear you on our radio. Come in, come in. Do you read me? But no, Miss Frizzle. Most of us were too scared to move, but Janet started searching our bus. In the glove compartment, she found Miss Frizzle's lesson book. As she began reading from it, a huge planet came into our view. Class, this is Jupiter, said Janet. It's the first of the outer planets and the largest planet in our solar system. She couldn't touch Miss Frizzle's things, but this is an emergency. As we approach Jupiter, we can see some of its 16 moons. Arnold, are you listening? Boy, Miss Frizzle plans everything. We thought the school bus was going to land, but there was no solid ground to land on. Jupiter is a gas giant, <coughs> a planet made almost entirely of gases. Excuse me. As we left Jupiter, we wondered and we worried, would we ever get home? Do you guys think they'll get home soon? They always find a way, right? The next sight made us forget our troubles. It was Saturn, a gas planet like Jupiter. It had swirling clouds and lots of moons, but the most incredible thing about Saturn was its rings. It was the most beautiful planet in the solar system. It is beautiful, isn't it? Next was Uranus, a blue-green gas planet with faint gray rings and moons. Some scientists think that they might be made of chunks of graphite, the material used in pencils on Earth. The bus was going faster and faster, and we couldn't control the autopilot. We swept past stormy Neptune, another blue-green planet eighth from the sun, and all we could think about was finding our teacher, Miss Frizzle. We were going so fast that we almost missed seeing the ninth planet, tiny little Pluto and its moon Charon. We were so far away from the sun that it didn't even look big anymore. It looked just like a very big bright star, but we were leaving the solar system. Every 248 years, Neptune's orbit is further out than Pluto's. Then Neptune is the ninth planet, but most of the time Pluto is the ninth planet from the sun. Janet flipped rapidly through Miss Frizzle's book. Suddenly she found something new, the instructions for the autopilot. We punched an asteroid belt on the control panel. Slowly, the bus turned around. It was working, we were going back. When we reached the asteroid belt, there was Miss Frizzle. Hey, that asteroid is dressed funny. That's not an asteroid, it's Miss Frizzle. When Miss Frizzle was back at the wheel, the bus headed straight for Earth. We re-entered the atmosphere and landed with a thump and we looked around. Boys and girls, we're arriving on Earth, the third planet from the sun. We were in the school parking lot again and the rockets were gone. The spacesuits were gone. The bus was a wreck. Everything was back to normal. Thank goodness. Hello again, old friend. I can imagine I would be a little bit afraid as well on a trip like that.
In the classroom, we made a terrific chart of the planets and a mobile of the solar system. At last, it was time to go home for the day. It had been a typical day in Miss Bristle's class. Now we had only one problem. Would anyone ever believe us when we told them about our trip? We went to outer space today. Of course you did, dear. And there was Miss Frizzle floating among the asteroids. What an imagination you have. My favorite planet was Jupiter. No, maybe Mars, of course. Saturn was gorgeous. Mom, make him stop. We could have been lost in space forever. Eat your salad, honey. So nobody believes the children as they're coming back home. And that is the end. But it says, attention readers, do not attempt this trip on your own school bus. Three, ways, three reasons why not. Number one, attaching rockets to your school bus will upset your teacher, the principal, and your parents. It will not get you into orbit anyway. An ordinary bus cannot travel in outer space. Two, landing on certain planets may be dangerous for your health. Even astronauts cannot vi visit Venus. It's too hot and Mercury is too close to our sun. Or Jupiter, its gravity would crush our human, our human uh, beings, and people cannot fly to sun, to the sun either. Its gravity and heat would be too strong. And three, space travel could make you miss dinner with your family for the rest of your childhood. Even if the school bus could go to outer space, it could never travel through the entire solar system in one day. It took years for the Voyager space probes to do that. On the other hand, if a redheaded teacher in a funny dress shows up at your school, start packing. The end. So tell me what you liked about the book. Tell me your favorite part in the comments section and tell me what you would want to visit if you were in a bus with our class going to outer space. Have a great day and never stop reading.